brothers rock Jesus pieces, but they really don't know Jesus. Just know that he's the seat and please don't leave it. We got the keys to the kingdom. We'll never be defeated. Evil legions, all the demons. I know you see them screaming, please believe it. We got the keys to the kingdom. We got the keys for the kingdom. How did, did we fly over here? Did we, how do we get over here? By, by boats or ships. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 15. We want to just call it the Bible and show you that what we know is black history at one time was Bible prophecy. So we're going to read that. Read. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, so at this time, Moses was leading us out into the wilderness. And he said, okay, God has given me a message. It shall come to pass in the future, meaning it will happen, if you don't listen to God and these commandments I'm about to put before you, but that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. My sister right there looking at the flyer. My sister right here looking at the flyer. I'm telling you right, right here. So I asked the brother, what's your name, brother, by the way? Julius. Julius. Says, what's your name, sister? Tracy. Julius and Tracy. So I asked Julius before you came up, Tracy. I said, how did our people get to this landmass? How did we get to America? You don't know? Okay. He said, what would you say, Julius? He said, by boats. We're proving that that's Bible prophecy. God had already put that in front of us thousands of years ago before it happened. But it had to come to pass just like God said. And we're showing you the reason why. Why we went to slavery. Read this again for us. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. So the root of the problem is that our people, the Israelites, we would not hearken or listen to God. Okay, right? And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said if we did not listen to him, not follow his law, statutes, and commandments that these curses or these very bad things will be promised to happen to us. Okay? So let's go through these curses and prove that they happen. Read verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says our sons and our daughters will be given unto another people. In slavery, were our children given unto another nation? Wake them up! Did the white man take our children? Yes, that, let, let's pick up the sign. Let's pick, now we can you get the sign right here. Now we can you get the sign right here. Tracy, Julius, I want y'all to see something. See this right here? What does it look like to you? This is an auction. Our children will be an auction off. They say, run, 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 nigga, they got a one, nine, the two, nine. So, Master Charles over here, you see what I'm saying? You remember these things. This is our history. They said that what? Our children do what? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It was prophesied. God said, if you don't listen to my commandments, your children will be given to another people. And let's get more specific. I'd like to pull verse 41. You can put that down, Navi. Thank you. Verse 41. Watch this, Tracy. I'm going to go into the sign in a second, too. But go ahead and look down there and try to correlate your name, what, what you'll be called today with what God calls you. But watch. Listen up, Tracy. Watch, Julius. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. So, Tracy, Julius, it said our people will have sons and daughters, correct me? But Thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. But they said our sons and daughters shall go into captivity. What's the easier word for captivity? 
Slavery. Slavery. It said our sons and daughters that we will have will be going into slavery. Did that happen to our people? You better believe it. You know it did. We, let's go to verse 68 to go into how what he said, how we got into this land. You remember that, correct? You said we got here by boats. We know that's a historical fact. Watch this. Bible prophecy, read. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. Okay, okay. We went a little fast there. It said the Lord shall bring us into Egypt again. Are you familiar with the book of Exodus in the Bible? Anything? The Prince of Egypt, you've never seen the movie, Moses let my people go? Not familiar, okay. So, get Exodus 20 and 2. We're going to catch you up on some history so you can understand that scripture more clearly. Why is he saying he's going to bring us into Egypt again? My brother right there, I am, a, I am a central worker. You got a second to talk about God? All right, then look, listen up. We're going to bring it out for you. What's your name, bro? Victor. Victor. Julius, Tracy, what's, what's my sister's name right here? Justice, Julius, Tracy, Victor, I gotta remember that, let's go. So, we're bringing out our history, and we're proving that it is Bible prophecy. So I gotta ask you, Justice, I asked them before, but I see where your mind's at. Victor, this is for you too. How did our people get to this land here? Slavery. Through slavery. And what mode of transportation do we take to get here? Both, do you, do you agree with that, Victor? How do our people get to this landmass? Slavery and via what mode of transportation? Uh, ships. ships, ships, ships. Read this again. Deuteronomy 28 and the whole exodus. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we're gonna stop right there. I was asking them, I don't know about y'all familiarity. Are you guys familiar with Exodus? When Moses, Brought the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. Let my people go. Y'all know about that story? Okay, he said, look, we're going to catch y'all up. Read Exodus 20 and verse 2. Watch this. Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So this was the statement God made. He said, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Watch this. Out of the house of bondage. It said, Egypt is the house of bondage. What's another word for bondage? If you're bound, if I have you in bondage, you're in what? We said the word earlier. Captivity is another word with an S. What'd you say, Victor? Slavery, slavery. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Are you following? Now we're going to get more understanding back in Deuteronomy 28. Remember, these are curses that were prophesied to happen to our people. Read. And the, Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Remember. Egypt is synonymous with what? Slavery. So it says, the Lord shall bring us into slavery again, but With ship. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. Just as I see your eyes opening up, you're like, whoa, that was in the Bible. I didn't know that was in the Bible. That's in the Bible. This is our book. Do you, do you know the prophets, the forefathers that you read about, Moses that I mentioned earlier, Jesus the Christ, you know they were black men? That's right. Do you know that? You don't know that. You, you're only too sure. No. You might have heard that, but do you know that? I know God is spirit and truth. Okay, God is spirit and truth. We're, we're going to deal with that, but watch this. Watch the physical manifestation of the Lord on the earth. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. We got to pull it. We got to pull it. Because you need to know this. You got to think about this. You been to church before? You been to church before? Church? You have the understanding that you're Lord of Jesus Christ, correct? But I ask you something as basic as, what does he look like? And we're like, mm. God is not the author of confusion. So there's something, there's something misaligned there. In the church, they bring a confusion, but in the word, it just clearly says what Jesus looks like. Okay. So you got to understand, it's a little bit of taboo, there's a little bit of stuff being put in. They, they're pulling, pulling uh, the rule over your eyes. They ain't trying to show you everything. But we're going to bring it out plainly because we're the real prophets here. Read. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. <laughs> That's what y'all do. <laughs> then after class, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. What the hell is this? Get on my damn nerves.
So read that again. Verse 11. Say, I am Alpha and Omega. So that's the Lord. He said, I'm the beginning, I'm the first and the last. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Right? The first and the last. Uh-huh. And what thou seest, write in a book. So I wanted to get that point because a lot of times it's passed around. Jesus is spirit. You know, no one knows what Jesus looks like, something like that. Which you got to ask yourself, though. In the history, Jesus walked to earth. We understand that, correct? Bring it up. Jesus walked to earth. He had disciples that dealt with him, talked to him, spoke. So somebody had to see him. They put him on the cross, didn't they? If they didn't put the invisible man on the cross, they had to see him. You like, follow him? So his image is actually in these scriptures. Right. What thou seest. Right in a book. So this is dealing with John the Revelator. He's another man that saw Jesus That's physically. Right. So he said, what you see, write in this book. He didn't write Pop of Smoke Spirit. Go ahead. Verse uh, 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So one, it's, it's clear. The Lord is a man. We, we don't deal with that confusion. Well, God, it says his. That's the first word. His head and his hair were white and woolly. Right. Who has woolly textured hair on this earth? Do y'all know what woolly textured hair is? Wool comes from sheep, correct? Woolly would be that bushy, like a sheep, sheep's wool. It's bushy or what they would call nappy today. Right. What, what they teach you is bad hair. But the hair we shouldn't be ashamed of because Jesus the Christ had the same hair. Right. And when we go pull, eventually God has the same hair. But you haven't been taught that in the Christian church. All right, Victor. You got a fly? Yeah. Okay, let's, hey, get that information, Victor. But we should never be ashamed of that hair. That woolly hair, that, that hair you got under this hat right here, my, 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 my brother Julius, that hair you got under that hat, that's righteous hair. That's the hair of the Lord. We're going to read, bro. He said in his hairs, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says, his hairs were white and woolly. You know, when you get up in age, the man's hair becomes more gray, but it's, it's becoming purely white. It grays, it's, it's, a, it's a color transformation. It takes time. There you go, and then he says, going to turn white. And then it says, his eyes were as a flame of fire. What does that mean? She looked confused. His eyes are a flame of fire. What was Christ's first miracle? Do y'all know? Bring it out! He went to a wedding. He turned water into wine. When we drink wine, the whites of our eyes become what color? Red. That's all it's going into. It's, it's no deep parable. He's not shooting beams from his eyes. It said he has white woolly hair. Now we're going to the details of his eyes. Saying that red is the flame of fire. Read more. And his feet. Now we get to the good part. The part y'all been waiting for. His feet. If y'all took off y'all shoes and socks and we looked at the top of your foot, it would be the same color as the rest of your skin, correct? So this is the way they're going to reveal Christ's skin color. This is what y'all have been waiting for, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. It says now his skin is like unto fine brass. What color is brass? It's a derivative of brown. It's basically just a shiny brown. What? As if they burned in a furnace. So it says not only was his skin brown, but John was like, the only way I can describe this easily for the, for the readers to understand, it looks like he burned in a furnace. Anything that you burn in a furnace comes out what color? Black. Black. Say a little louder, Jim. What color is it? Black. Black. So Jesus Christ is what color? Black. Jesus Christ is what color? Christ is black. Right. We were not taught this. We have not been taught this because what? They want you to have low self-esteem. They want to have low self-concept. They want to look at our communities and see worthlessness. If, if we keep this away from our community, we don't see each other as the children of God. Yes. Now you look at hold up. Jesus Christ was a black man. So there's something special about this man that we got. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. They don't want you to know these things. Let's, let's get Daniel now. Bring it out. Matter of fact, first go to John 14 and 9. Why is this important? This is the beginning of you identifying with the Bible. Right. First, it says the skin is going to come upon you. You got to identify, you got to see yourself in this book. It's not old scrolls and old white men with beards, how he was taught. That's not, that's not real. That's right. Mm-hmm. John 14 and 9. Bring it on. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you? Okay. John chapter 14, verse 8. Follow, follow. We just got the image of Christ. Christ is black. You have just been proven in the Bible. But Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. So, 
Now, there's something that might be in the back of your mind, like, hmm, Christ is black. But the disciple said, is, show us the Father. We want to see the most high God. Do you understand? Go ahead. Verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? So look what Jesus is saying. He said, you want to see the most high God. You want to see my Father. He said, oh, you don't understand. I've been with you this whole time. Watch this. He that have seen me have seen the Father. So he said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Why? Because Christ was the Son of God, meaning he shared the same image. That's right. We look like our parents. That, 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 that's an easy fact to be understood. Christ is saying, I look just like my father. You see me? I'm a black man. I got woolly hair. That's how my father looks. That's now, right. can we prove it? We must prove all things. We can. Let's read Daniel. We're going to prove it to y'all. Jesus Christ is black. And what y'all can't be scared to say, God himself is black. That's yes, right. God has an image. God is a man. God is an image. Right, right. Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Daniel's having a vision. He said, I behold till the thrones were cast down. Thrones are what? What rulers sit on. Thrones represent kingdoms. He's saying the kingdoms of the earth being destroyed. Go ahead, right. read. And the ancient of days did sit. I like the emphasis he put on that. The ancient of days, because what? He predates time. He created days, so he's before days and has no end of days. That's right. Days are a figment of what he created. That's the ancient of days is the most high God. That's right. Right. Read. He said he did what? And the Ancient of Days did sit. He said he did sit. Meaning what? The Ancient of Days, the Most High God you pray to, has a body. He has a form. It's not just an imaginary cloud that you pray to. That's not true. That's what they want you to think. This is a man. This is actually a man on the throne with power. That's right. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. Whose garment? God is wearing clothing. Remember, in Genesis, we were made in what? In his image, correct? Yes, Are we supposed to smoke? No. So what is God? He had a physical form like us. We're made in his image. Yes, he got right. arms, feet, and a body. Yes, right. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. You like that? The head of God's hair is like the pure wool. Pure wool. It's not straightened. It's not the image of the white man you see on the throne. It's Zeus with the toga on. That's not real. The Bible said God has woolly. Show up, man. Take the hand off. Take the hand off. You got to see my brother. Y'all see, clap it up for my brother right here. You see that? Be proud of that hair on your head. Right. Now you look like God. You understand that? You understand that? Hey, watch. Let's get something real quick. First Corinthians 11 and 2. First Corinthians 11. Because... There's a reason we're going to need you to keep your hat on. One, be proud and show that hair. That's, that's the hair that Christ has. That's right. But two, it's actually a law while the scriptures are coming out. Let's, let's explain that. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. So, God is putting out the order. He said, on the earth, the head of the man is the black Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's no, right. keep the hat on, keep the hat on. Keep the hat on. We're going to explain why. Because your head is Christ, you follow it? And the head of the woman is what? It's who? The man. What? And the head of Christ is God. And Christ's head is God. So it's God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. Now watch, right? Every man praying or prophesying. Now, so it says, knowing the understanding of your head, every man praying or prophesying. When you send up prayers to God, or you're prophesying, meaning you're in the midst of prophecy. You got Revelation 19 and 10. We're going to explain to you the way you're in the midst of prophecy right now in this very moment. Okay? Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brother that had the testimony of Jesus worship God. Watch this, watch this, what? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In the scriptures, that he said, they testify of me in John 5. We're reading the testimony of Christ. So we're going to these Bibles. We're going, sorry, these scriptures in the Bible. You cannot have your head covered as a man. Do you understand that? That's right. Yes, yeah, that's true. So watch, watch. So hold up. Go back to the Corinthians. Finish it off. We didn't finish it. 1 Corinthians 11 and 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So you're in the midst of prophecy right now because we're going through the Bible. We're explaining the scriptures, giving you the sense, right? Having his head 
covered. So in the midst of that, if you have your head covered, you have your hood on, you have a hat on. Go ahead. Dishonoreth his head. You're dishonoring your head as a man. That, that's a sign of, of disrespect. So who? Who's your head? That we read earlier. The head of the man is. Thank you, sister. The, the head of the man is Christ. By you covering your head while the scriptures are coming out, you're dishonoring Christ. Therefore, also dishonoring the Most High God. It's just set up that way. You understand that? So go ahead. All praises. Fold it up. Keep it in your lap. Don't put it back on while the scriptures are coming out. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.